Alan Rosinko. What is One of the most gratifying things about selling a meritorious product to the American public is their fine sense of gratitude when that product lives up to their best expectations. This certainly is the continuous experience of the makers of Crucian salt. Letters from grateful users pour into them consistently from all over the nation, and every letter is read. As millions of users of Crucian know, there is a little pink slip in each package. This little slip is simply to tell users that the makers of Crucian are glad to learn at first hand the extent of everyone's success with their product. Incidentally, the pamphlet in the package tells every Crucian user that a wonderfully informative 20-page booklet is available free for the asking. This very interesting, authentic book booklet is entitled How to Achieve Stylish Slenderness Without Injuring Your Health. Many hundreds of thousands of people have sent for this booklet, and a great many of them have later asked for and received extra copies for friends, which only goes to show how people like to pass on to others good news and personally proven advice. Now, let's hear briefly what Miss Rita Wilson of City Island, New York, tells us. I realized I was getting too salt, 220 pounds, and my physician advised me to take this in salt. I am now reduced by 48 pounds of steel pie. I'm delighted with this. Then there's this report from Miss M. Kepner of Christmas Convert that I absolutely relied upon. 
At the land that he died, this afternoon with a Buddhist priest at the same time. Did I know there was a bad law for an earned counsel like you who gets back from the seminary? I have many of the dangerous apartments before I stop trying to make Christmas out of the wrong kind of Wrong kind? Of well, there can be no right or wrong. Old Chinese, the wrong kind, is to make fun for each other, Samurai. But like old dogs, they can't be taught new tricks. But for the young, we must do what's right. For if the new earth can see, they can take root and grow to death. Do you think that the new generation are faces making headway? Of course it is. Do you know for yourself? I'm not sure. I can't be certain of anything with these people. They're, they're so peculiar. Oh, they're not peculiar. They're just different to that. They hold the white man's faults with all his virtues, but they express them in opposite manner. You know that in China, the needle of the compass points south instead of north, but the people pay their doctors when they're well, and give them nothing when they're sick, but the place of honor there is on the left, and the white is the dress of mourning. Oh, government boy, stop worrying about the renegade soul of all these things. Who from his cradle saw things upside down from our viewpoint. And do you strive for the most yellow boys and girls who were born on California Street? You'll find that when they take Christianity seriously, they take it very seriously to be. Well, the sun strikes in the neck. They said, I won't yell with you here another second. What with two masters, three Christians, and no wedding today, I'm tired to death. Better go to bed yourself. Yes, Father. How long do you suppose it will be before I meet one of those Chinese who takes Christianity very seriously? Mm-hmm. The Lord will give you proof in his own good time, boy. Uh, uh, just talk, well. I laugh, the father. Funny. I'm going to talk to the next door right there. What is it? The clock is struck. Good evening. Yes, sir. Father, that's very nice. This is the father's house. Come in. Yes, now, that's a time. Thank you. I sing compliments to my master, Abu. His honorable wife soon died. Only that this is dumb and bad What is the father like? This man says that a dying Chinese woman sent one of us. Abu, wife died very soon. He's dumb. I just heard his words. Uh, I, I let me go, Father Gilfoy. You're so tired. Well, I'm never tired when there's duty to be done. But I'd like to go if you'll permit me, Father. Let me attend this woman's home. All right, Father. So perhaps you'll be the proof you were just now asking for. Thank you, Father. If some sick, our poor wife soon dies. I'll be ready in a moment. Who is this Abu you come from? Where does he live? Abu, my honorable master. I shall play with it. Mm, I thought I knew every living soul in Chinatown, but his name is Strange. I have everything. I've got it. Come. I grew white. Soon die. Good night, Father. Wait. Oh, Isn't it strange that something strange about this place? Strange? Just no Chinese? Oh, awfully old. Looks like a trade of moment. There's something about him. It's too cool. Yes, my father. Yes, some flip. I grew white. Soon die. I don't like that message. We come from a dying woman, Father. A Chinese who's not a backslider. I must go. Come, come to my room, guys. Show me the way. I go. Good night, Father Good night, Father Ryan. Go, right, that's the message. This is strange. I let them. I've noticed this house in passing, but I, I thought nobody lived here. This is an Asapo. My son died. End up here. Thank you. Good. Dark is sick. Haven't you any lights here? Nice up there. I call. Apple. Apple. Oh, there's a light showing now. I must uh, Apple. Come. Yes, sir. Come. 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 Out. And you see the way up my miserable stairs. Yes, thank you. Now that there's some light. Well, oh, have you called an American doctor for your sick wife, Mr. Boo? No, Reverend Father. This jolly doctor has called no American physician. Well, you must do so at once. With all due respect to your national medicine, a sick woman should not be entrusted to the care of a Chinese physician. I have secured no physician of my own race to attend my dying wife. No doctor at all? My wife requires the position of the spirit, honorable master, not the healer of the body. James, who entered this humble room, please. Oh, Father, 
Holy Father, you have come to me at last. Allow me, Lavalin Father, to present my wife. Your wife, sir? Well, that girl isn't sick. You were not told she was sick. You were told she was dying. Dying? Hmm? Watch it as well as I am. She is dying, worthy superior, because I am about to kill her. What? You will note that you approach closer that she is bound to the chair she sits in. About her throat is a silken cord now loose, which will soon be pulled tight to stop her blood. You! Smirking yellow beast, we about that. Hey, turn like one. Yes. Yeah. Thank God. Open that door. Help. Police. Oh, Father. Don't struggle against my husband's servant. You will ask me our horse this year. Come, it's precious. Don't delay. Give me the last rites of holy church. Feel my confession and absolve me for my sins. Oh, I beg you. Holy Father. You think I... I'll let him kill you with his presence? Unlock that door. Let me go, you yeah? Help. Help. Oh, Father. Father, is it you? I beg you, worthy father, to this from your thing, Hathaway. The wife of this unprepossessing Afu has spoken true. Struggle is useless. There is nothing you can do to save her life. But as she is of your Christian faith, you can prepare what you call her soul. Oh, father, please, father. Give me absolution. Then you can go. You may call the police. Call anyone you wish. Yes. Then you may go and tell anyone you wish. You? You mean when I hear your wife's confession, you let me go to bring the police upon your head? Yes. I swear it on the blood of a white cock. And that is an oath which no Chinese will break. I... I don't understand this. This must be some joke you're playing. An unholy joke on a priest that loves your people. Oh, no, Father. No. We play no checks on you, my worthy friend. But if you meant to kill this girl, you wouldn't swear an oath that I'd be released to tell. We also pray to a natural. There's a horrid something in this room. Something I can only feel. What is it that's so awful here? Confess me, Father. Oh, give me absolute his duty is to control. I need consolation, Father. Oh, my need is great. Hear my confession for the poverty of my feet. I'll hear your confession. But if this is a trick to mock a holy church, may the curse of God fall on you all. I swear it is no trick. Confess me, Father. Very well. Leave us alone. Sorry, Sam. Be quiet. My servant will leave. I regret that I must. No. My husband already knows what I am about to tell you, Father. And if he left us here alone, you could not help me to escape. His escape is quite impossible. I have prepared myself for this condition. The cords that drive me to this chair will not let me kneel before you. Those cords, unfortunately, cannot be removed. We'll see about that later. Proceed, my sister. Bless me, Father. For I have to sleep. A sin that has brought me unto death. Let's keep it back. Then I'm going to talk to the city of spirit of society. I can trust to Almighty God. The Blessed Mary ever learned that I have lost not my husband, but another. Oh, How could you marry this now? Man old enough to be your father when you were promised to me. My very wish is you know. You know a daughter, Mr. Bates. Yes, in China. You and I are no longer Chinese. We were born here in San Francisco. Neither of us can even speak correctly in our mother tongue. We are Americans. If you'd only been with me, to give me strength to a few. Of course, I was away preparing for our future. You were weak enough to take our food. Oh, you must understand and forgive me, Ma. You must forgive me, Ma. You must. Oh, it wasn't because I did. Oh, it wasn't because I did. Oh, it wasn't because I didn't love you. I shall always love you. And hey, you understand me now? I am. Um, I don't know waiting. In my letters instead of waiting. And I, I thought it would be each and kind of for us both to know. You must know that we were sweet, Father. We found you here. 
have merely to watch. No, no, no! I'd rather spend a little night to share the name of the right guy. I use it so. And you think this is it? If one draws the knife slowly and carefully, a man may live for hours. The night now, when the last one was, and I will make you one. My eyes don't open as Nemo was slowly set to fish. And at last, you grow no more. You made a nerve, I'm not crazy. No, I will. I will. Oh, oh. oh. you see? I will. Oh, who is the heathen? Ah, who is the avenger? Up his honor. You, you no, don't think of him, Father. But of me. Will God forgive me, Hector? Will you give me absolute? Oh, my sister, what a sin! What a punishment you've had! If you think he's punished enough, then give me absolute. I would give you what you ask. Absolute of a day is nominated for the sixth year, third time for the last. Oh, God! You need have no fear of this. I believe in this filthy house, and you are going with me. I regret that for my honorable wife, I have made contrary plans. That cord about her neck is to be used for the teaching of another ancient custom of my people. The thousand and one painful death. I have heard of that trial, Corsa. You would slowly take the quarters to bring the war, then unloose it and bring her too. Then repeat the process again. And again. That cord shall not be used. I'll keep that. I stand likewise. Don't put your bloody hands on me. Let go of me. You are unworthy servants. We bless the necessity of the strength. Make these let me listen. You talk of your tiny honor. I have your own and I shall be allowed to pass free through that door. I shall keep my oath. And you may summon the police if you will. They will come too late. So I stand. The door is open, the Reverend Father. You are at liberty. Now, like one, the first of a thousand and one painful death begins. Oh, 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 you please, police, police, help, help, police. Oh. Oh. Something laying on the desk. I see it. It's a book. 
my prayer book. I must have dropped it. And that proof that I was here. Look, their footprints are there. My footprints. Oh, we may another man let you in this house and up these stairs. Yes, yes, I, I don't understand. We'll soon find out. Come on, boy. Which is the room, Father? That one there. Well, break it open, Mike. Your purpose is the door and lock. Yes, the room is Left everywhere and undisturbed. Except for a single pair of footprints. The same footprints, Father, that you're to leave now. What is the room I just left? And it was full of people. There the girl sat in her tiny shirt this morning night. And our boat stood there. And there was the man who held the cord. And over there, wait, over there was an alcove. Behind the curtain where the dead boy lay. The alcove now, at the wall, like all the rest. Hey, sounds like this is the same party. Could have been built in France since Father Ryan left it. Give it the act. Yes. Oh, they've made a trick here. I'm all bewildered. Father Ryan, look through the hole. Good Lord. Two skeletons. What's the name of the name of a tiny woman's dress of mourning? It's the same one the girl wore. And the other. About those couple of boats, I recognize the little fragments of the boy's clothes. I remember who our food was. How he was the owner of this house. He went back to China 13 years ago. This tells an answer back to me. That new boy, Chris, he disappeared. Oh, my. What, what is he called? I'm going to take a seriously and take a seriously. Our food was alive. Died. Came back, and those other footprints from the grave. Merciful Father of Heaven, tonight I have confessed thy death. Oh. <laughs> now you folks sit still while Satan and me goes out in the cemetery and figures out in a petty yarn to tell you about next week. We'll come right back and tell you what we've sunk up. <laughs> It has often been said that man is what he eats. And of course, that's meant to apply to women too. But the fact is that this saying alone isn't altogether true. In many homes may be found two people who eat about the same amount of the same food. Yet one of them is overfat and the other one is thin. You see, it isn't only the food you eat, but what your system causes you to obtain from that food that counts. Now it isn't right for anyone to accumulate a lot of excess fat on his or her body. It isn't helpful to either your happiness or your health. In fact, it's very likely indeed to be dangerous. Sooner or later, very fat people usually get high blood pressure. And at any time, they are more likely to contract disease than are people of normal weight. That's why life insurance companies are so interested in the subject. They know, too, that excess fat causes an undesirable extra strain on the heart, as well as affecting other vital organs. So, if you are overweight, resolve definitely right now that you will begin the simple, safe, gruesome treatment tomorrow. Take no heed at all of such misleading sayings as, laugh and grow fat. Being fat yourself is nothing to laugh about. It's just something that others laugh at when they look at overfat people. Instead, laugh as you grow thinner, or to put it more correctly, you'll be altogether happier when you notice how fruition helps you to bring your weight to the correct amount. You'll be happier because you begin to feel much better very soon after you start taking fruition. More alert in mind and body, more anxious to go places and do things. You'll feel more useful and look more useful. And all you have to do is to take a half teaspoonful of fruition in a glass of hot water once a day. That's all there is to it. Go easy on very fattening foods, of course. But don't let anyone talk you into freak diet or anything else that would weaken you. With the simple cushion way, you should become stronger and begin to enjoy life more from the very outset. Remember, 
Bruising is also taken daily by millions of people who are not overweight. They take a tiny pinch of crucian in their morning coffee just to keep them feeling fit. Remember, too, that crucian is prescribed by more doctors throughout the world than any other medicinal culture or crystal. So don't hesitate. Don't sleep another day. Go to your nearest drug counter, get a jar of the original, original genuine crucian salt, and begin taking your half teaspoonful in a glass of hot water tomorrow morning. You'll soon see just what vivacious people mean when they say they have that crucian feeling. <laughs> well, Satan, you and me have sunk up a very puffy yarn to sing these folks that they call out us next week. It's a cheerful story of black magic, and we call it Devil Hands. <laughs> Devil Hands. 